fall of a wrestling with Monopoly events with Jake Hager, and I'm absolutely loving the Manchester United scarf there. Thank you. Thank you. I got to go to Old Trafford yesterday, so this was a nice gift. I'm a converted Man U fan now. You've joined at a very, very tough time. It's probably one of the toughest decades we've had in in a long, long time. Good luck, but I feel like I brought you guys... Uh, good luck over here. So I'm going to so. be the X factor to push right. it over the edge. So this must be an incredible experience to catch up with old friends. You know, the likes of John Hennigan, Nick Nemeth. You've not seen those guys in a little while. And the fans as well is coming to talk about some of their favorite moments. It must be incredible, right? Yeah, it's very cool. A lot of the fans that I meet now, like I met as uh, when they were kids. And so they have some story that they want to tell me about from 10 years ago. God, I feel old. But it's really cool. Like I had one fan tell me today that uh, he didn't have very much confidence. And after meeting me and how, the way I treated him, um, it really helped him out and helped him become more social and stuff like that. So little moments like that make you smile. I got teared up when he said it and gave him a big hug. And so it, it was cool. And um, everyone here has been so lovely, so friendly. Um, and, uh, you know, who doesn't love wrestling? 100%. I'm a absolutely huge wrestling nerd as well. And we used to, well, we still do. Obviously, WrestleMania is coming up. But WrestleMania 26 in 2010, when you won the Money in the Bank ladder match, that takes place around like 2 a.m. over here at that point in the card. It usually finishes about like 4 or 5 a.m., right? So I was staying up every WrestleMania from about WrestleMania 23 all the way up till about WrestleMania 30 when I was in school. So that moment in particular, I was hyped because it was the true start of the next generation of pure athletic all-American wrestlers that we hadn't seen since Kurt Angle. So getting that WrestleMania moment at WrestleMania 26, how incredible was that for you? Yeah, what an honor, right, to win Money in the Bank and then go on to be World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, really, really cool moment. And I think that's what pro wrestling is, like the best of pro wrestling is like you can, you can do oh, a million moves, you can do a hundred flips. You're not going to remember that. You're going to remember the moments. You're going to remember the way you felt in that one moment. And uh, I think AEW does a good job of creating that as well. But winning Money in the Bank um, – it literally changed my life. It changed my life. I was able to buy a house afterwards. I proposed to my wife after that. So it was a, a really big moment for me. And I was scared on top of that ladder. It was too high. It was too high up. You know, getting that full circle moment with your former inner circle member, Chris Jericho, because he was the person that you cashed in on, but you birthed one of the biggest fractions in the history of AEW with the Inner Circle. That must be crazy how things like that work. It's really cool, isn't it? Yeah. Like, come back full circle. Yeah. Um, Chris was the one who got me the job. Tony originally was like, uh, we'll, we'll see in a month. I like him, but we'll see in a month. And then Chris went to him and was like, no, this is my guy. Hire him. And uh, so it was, it was really... Um, a pat on my back. It was a, quite the compliment for that to come from the greatest of all time, Chris Jericho. And so um, really cool working with him. I love the inner circle. It's 100% some of the some of my favorite work that I've done. And when you look back at that Money in the Bank cash-in, how early did you find out that that was going to happen? And that adrenaline rush must have been one of the biggest of your whole career. I don't exactly remember when they told me. Um, I think it was just a couple days, like maybe like the Thursday before Mania yeah. or something. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I was like, you guys got the right name on there? But feeling that belt on your shoulder, we've got replica belts in the room next door of that world heavyweight title that you held. That must have just been like, wow, I've seen the likes of Batista, Triple H, Ric Flair, all these greats that you'll have seen when you weren't even a part of the WWE. To hold that title yourself, obviously you're an ambitious guy, you've got goals, but to finally realize that dream, it, it must have been a, a huge, huge deal for you at that time, at a young, young age as well. Yeah, yeah, 27. Um, I was, um, <clears throat> yeah, very blown away by it. Uh, it's a, a lot of responsibility comes with being the champion. 
um, not only like publicly, but also like in the back with the boys and how you conduct yourself. Um, you have to earn it. There's no uh, fairy dust that can be sprinkled on you and boom, you're a champion. You you earn that shit through failing and and learning and not making the same mistakes again. So it's very cool honor. Every time I see it, I'm like, I still like I pinch myself. Like I can't believe I, I did it. So who were the guys in the locker room at that time? I know you've mentioned Chris Jericho was a, a key, was the key reason why you're in AEW now. Was he one of those guys in the locker room early on in WWE that kind of supported you and were giving you notes and, and pointers if you needed them? Uh, no, I never took any advice from anybody. I, I was too good. I, I, <laughs> I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Full heel comment there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Chris was one of them. I was very fortunate to work with guys like Fit Finley early on, um, Tommy Dreamer as well, guys that could kind of explain it to me and um, things that I need to be doing. And um, really, really fortunate to have like great coaches in my life. I have to credit so much of my success to the coaches like from high school, from junior high, even in college, um, just – blessed to have people that care about me and uh you know want to help you just because they want you to do good you mentioned tommy dreamer there there was the ecw run that you had as well where you was ecw world champion what a great platform for you to showcase your skills in front of that massive audience for the first time that was the equivalent of what nxt is today it would sort of change from being the notoriously extreme promotion to more a chance for the younger guys to showcase the skills and get a world title under the belt as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, got to work with Matt Hardy, got to work with uh, Christian uh, very early on there. And uh, I think it was like very vital to the sex, to the success I had. Those four people um, really kind of show me what TV wrestling is and how to run a storyline and how to do a program and how to be a bad guy or how to be a good guy. And just like, broke it down and um i think it shows in the way we wrestled and then the matches we had when you look at the, the AEW run you've had so far so many great matches and my favorite probably came at the toughest time of collectively the, the company's career probably in your career as well when it was a stadium stampede match in 2020 when no one knew what the hell was going on due to covid but that was like a little ray of sunshine in a dark time for a, a, not just wrestling fans, but like people worldwide. And that's still one of my favorite matches in AEW history. Oh, thank you for that. Seriously, it's, yeah. It's one of my favorite too. Um, the fact that we filmed it um, and we mo made it like a movie and we were able to cut during things and like... Really, for that first one, we kind of had like an outline, but we had no idea. We were walking around the stadium like, okay, sh should it should it go this way? And then like, oh, here's a bar that'd be a cool uh, area for the for the bar scene with me and Hangman. And uh, we didn't know anything until we like went there to film it. Uh, such a cool match to be a part of. Uh, the such huge names in the company stadium stampede Two, the second one where we got to rappel down off the scoreboard it was also very cool sitting on the edge of that scoreboard i was so nervous you know i don't like heights <coughs> bless you oh uh, thank you but um that bar scene with hangman and i uh was so cool how we got to take the shot you know like an old western yeah. and then just proceed to tear the bar up He's such an athlete. He is such an athlete. It, it was very fun, and we filmed that like in one take almost. And I'm yeah. good, but he's really good. And uh, I remember uh, afterwards, uh, Jericho was watching that, and he said, like you said, we didn't know what we were doing. And he said after he saw that scene, he was like, okay, we got something. And obviously you, for a particular time in your career, a bit later on, you balanced MMA with pro wrestling you were with bellator what was that experience like and how would you compare the pain obviously it's a lot more sustained in pro wrestling because you're in a lot more of an active calendar you're wrestling a lot more but how would you compare the pain you were sustaining in mma 
including training, to pro wrestling? Uh, yeah, I would say um, the pain in MMA is is way more than uh, pro wrestling. Um, we are active uh, in pro wrestling, always doing a show, but in MMA, you always have to be training. And so I was doing five days a week of training. Some days I do twice a day and then on the weekends, I'd have to go pay the bills and go wrestle independence. I mean, it was quite the grind. It was a hustle. Um, it really shows you uh, what you want and what you can do. Um, it's one of those moments where I had to, uh, like, I knew my value and I felt like I wasn't getting it. So I had to bet on myself and go prove it to him. And uh, fortunate for me, I had great coaches again around me, Josh Rafferty, Rob Bradford. Um, and they really took me in their hands all i knew was amateur wrestling i didn't know how to box i didn't know how to kickbox i didn't know how to uh do jujitsu um it was square one on a lot of that stuff like i have an over a thousand amateur wrestling matches which is kind of like an amateur fight and then i have the live television experience which will help with pressure and like knowing that you're gonna perform when it comes to the moment type deal um it was it was cool. Um, getting punched in the face sucks. <laughs> That's all you have to say. Everybody gets that. Um, what a journey, though. What a journey. So fortunate to like stay healthy and just have great people to come about. And um, man, I really enjoy it. When that cage door is locked, my my coach would go to me and he's like, "All right, you have permission to hurt people now." <laughs> That's a badass line to get you hyped up, right? That's a pretty good, it'll get you going, right? And, and you wanted Fedor, didn't you? Which unfortunately slipped away from you because he's now retired. You know, rightfully so. He's had a very long career. And we don't want to see him take any more damage than than he has. But did you think that that could have happened at some point? From the moment that I got to Bellator, I knew that it could happen. I knew it could happen. Um, and Bellator was working for it to happen. Can you imagine the all-American American fighting Fedor in Moscow? Like, I Rocky. mean, that's, that's Rocky. it's Rocky, you know? And so I really felt like it was my fight. Um, they gave it to a very deserving um, ranked heavyweight. Um, and Fedor was on fire that night. He looked, he didn't look old at all. He was quick. He was strong. It was uh, an impressive showing. So maybe I got lucky <laughs> that they didn't pick me, but I would have taken it in a heartbeat just to the all American American fight the all Russian Russian in Moscow. Let's go. Let's go in the lion's den. Was there ever a chance early on in your career, you know, you had that massive amateur wrestling background, was there ever a chance that you were going to go the MMA route early and maybe look to have gone with the UFC? Yeah, around 2013, 2014 is really when uh, the bug kind of hit me and I'm like, hey, I, I could go do this. Because pro wrestling, we're always looking, you know, what's next? Uh, we can't do this forever. And uh, I wish I would have got more serious into it back then. Um, I went to a fight, and after the fight, uh, a manager approached me, a big-time one. And I just kind of brushed him off because I wasn't ready for it yet. I, I didn't realize. But then three years later, <laughs> had no choice. It's like, time to do it. Amazing. And final one, if there's anyone that you have not yet faced who is either joining AEW, we know that Will Ospreay has just joined AEW, if there's anyone on the roster that you've not faced yet that you'd absolutely love to, who are they and why? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Will Ospreay. He's he's amazing. He's fun to watch. Um, and he's got such a personality too. Uh, he, he would be great to wrestle. Um, I also wouldn't mind wrestling Hangman Adam Page. Uh, it's been four years now. We got... We got to figure this out one more time barroom brawl it has hey, to happen hey bring it back there you go run it back 100 percent. well i know a lot of fans are excited to geek out with you and share their stories of how you have impacted them and shaped their love of wrestling so enjoy everything about this weekend enjoy manchester there you go go reds